Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Lighthouse for Jesus Ministries on this Thursday night service. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Brother Corey Andre Hawthorne. Amen. And I just thank God, amen, for the opportunity to be here with y'all tonight, amen, just to be able to minister to God's people, amen. I praise God for the young men that are, that are here every Thursday night, just rendering themselves, amen, working behind the scenes to bring the word to, to all of you. That's the work that you guys don't see, amen. So I really want to thank God for them, amen. I thank God for my wife, amen, that's here supporting me on tonight, amen. I want to thank God for and give honor to my pastor, the apostle of this house, Apostle Donnie Bowden Sr., amen, and his lovely wife, Sister Cindy, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. So as I said, I'm just grateful to God tonight, amen, to be able to come before you tonight, amen. Hallelujah. It's been, it's been quite a while, amen, since, uh, since the people of God have heard f- from me, amen. And um, hallelujah, I've just been kind of going about working a lot, amen, on the highways and the byways, amen. Hallelujah, but hallelujah, but 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 just trying to stay, hallelujah, just trying to stay in the presence and trying to stay in the will of God for my life, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. So uh, I believe that God did give me a word, amen, to give to the people tonight, amen, and, and the message that God gave me to speak to God's people is that, it's to tell you that God is an oath. He remembers. Amen. I'm going to say that again. God told me to tell you that God is an oath. He remembers. Amen. Now you may say, well, Brother Corey, what do you mean God is an oath? You mean God made an oath? No, I mean God is an oath. Amen. He remembers. Amen. Hallelujah. So the first, first we I want to go into the Old Testament. We want to go back couple of thousand years, amen, hallelujah, we want to look at two men, two men of God that God, hallelujah, made an oath, swore something to and made an oath to, amen, we're going to start off in Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 through 18, and the first man that God made an oath to, amen, his name was Abraham, hallelujah, and we start in uh, chapter 22, Starting at verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham the second time from heaven. The angel said, By myself have I sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, verse 17, I will surely bless you. I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the seashore and these years and these your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies in verse 18 and in your seed in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed amen hallelujah Jesus oh God because you have obeyed my voice amen hallelujah next we're going to turn over to Hebrews to the New Testament the Hebrews chapter 6 Hebrews chapter 6, we're going to read verses 13 through 18. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. Glory be to your name, oh God. We're going to read a little bit more about the oath that God made to Abraham. Verse 13 reads, for when God, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version so it may not match with the King James Version that they have on the screen, amen, but I like the way that the Amplified puts it. Verse 13, for when God made the promise to Abraham, he swore an oath by himself, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And so having patiently waited, he realized the promise and the miraculous birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come from God. Verse 16, and indeed men swear an oath, by one greater than themselves, and with them in all disputes the oath serves as a confirmation as what has been said, and it is the end of the dispute, amen? Verse 17, in the same way God, in his desire to show to the heirs of the promise 
the unchangeable nature of his purpose, the unchangeable nature of his purpose, intervened and guaranteed it with an oath. 18, so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and the oath, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement and indwelling strength to hold tightly to the hope that is set before us. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. So the first oath that God ever made, God made to a man called Abraham. Amen. And when he made the oath to him, God couldn't find any. God knew that when men swear to each other and when they make an oath to each other, they try to find something greater than themselves. They may say, well, I make an oath by my mother or I make an oath by my daddy. And if it's something that that other person knows is important to you, then if you make that oath by that person that's greater than you, they know that that person will accept it and believe it, amen. But God, when he made an oath to Abraham, hallelujah, because he wanted Abraham to know without a shadow of a doubt, amen, that the oath that he swore to him would be unchangeable, God knew that there was nobody else that he could swear by, that he could make an oath by greater than himself, amen. So he swore by himself, amen, and made that oath to Abraham, by, and he made it too impossible because, one, when God promises something, it's impossible for him to lie, amen. It's impossible for God to lie. So he doubled up on it by saying, I promise you this, it's impossible for me, for me to lie, and just for good measure, I throw in, I swear to you. I swear by myself, amen. Hallelujah. The second man of God, hallelujah, that God made an oath to in the Old Testament was a man named David. Amen. And we're going to go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, you want to start in the seventh chapter, amen. We're going to see this oath that God made to David, amen. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 8 through 9, and then we'll read verse 16. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel, amen? And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Verse 16, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Your throne shall be established forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read verse 16 again. The oath that God gave to David, amen, he said, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever. Before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. Hallelujah. These were two oaths, amen, that God made to two men of God thousands of years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Now what we want to do, hallelujah, we want to fast forward 2,000 years to the New Testament. Hallelujah. And I want to take y'all to the place where those oaths, that God made to Abraham and the oath that God made to David, where those oath was fulfilled, amen? Hallelujah. So we go into New Testament Jerusalem 2,000 years later, or th thousands of years later, amen? And we find a man named Zacharias. Hallelujah. He was a priest, amen? And he had went into the temple, hallelujah, to, to serve his priestly office, amen, that he had to do by his Levitical course, amen? Hallelujah. And he had a wife, amen. And his wife, Zachariah's wife was named Elizabeth. And both Zachariah and Elizabeth, amen, couldn't have any children. They were, her, her womb was barren, so she couldn't have children. And both of them were stricken in age, amen, to where they was past the age where they can have children. But the Bible tells us, and this is coming from um, Luke, the first chapter of Luke. Hallelujah, in the New Testament. God, the angel, the Bible says the angel of Gabriel appeared to Zechariah when he was in the temple and began to speak to him and told him, hallelujah, that his wife would get pregnant by him. Hallelujah, and that his wife would bear a child, amen, and that that child that his wife would have, 
That child will be a forerunner, a, a child and a, a great man of God and a great prophet that will prepare the way, hallelujah, for the king that was to come, amen. Hallelujah. So the angel told Zechariah, Zechariah told the angel, I'm too old, my wife is too old. Both of us are too old to have children. Amen. And my wife is barren. Amen. But the angel Gabriel told Zechariah, surely this thing that I have spoken to you will come to pass. And he told him, I'm going to close your mouth. You're going to be dumb. And you're not going to be able to speak until this thing is fulfilled. And the angel Gabriel told him, the reason why I'm doing this is because when I told you this, you didn't believe it. Hallelujah. So I'm going to make you dumb and you won't be able to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when Zechariah came out of the temple, he couldn't speak, but he was beckoning with his hands, trying to say something, and the people that was outside the temple was able to look at him and realize that he had seen an angel. Hallelujah, Lord God. So then, and we're talking about the angel Gabriel again, God had him busy, amen. Hallelujah. He went to a young woman that was despised, according to the Bible of God, word of God by many people. He went to her and told her, Amen. That he was going to use her. Amen. That he had chose her. That he had favored her. Amen. And God began to speak to Mary. Hallelujah. Tell Mary that she would get pregnant. But Mary told the angel, well, how can I get pregnant? I never slept with any man. Hallelujah. And the angel, the angel Gabriel began to speak and declare to Mary, hallelujah, this thing that was going to happen. Amen. So we want to go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 35. And we're going to read verse 35 through 55, amen. Verses 35 through 55. Hallelujah. So right now we're seeing in real time, amen, the fulfillment of the oath that God made to Abraham and the fulfillment of the oath that God made to David. Thousands of years later, amen. Verse 35. And the angel of the Lord said unto her. Well, let's go up to verse 34, amen. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing that I know not any man? And the angel of the Lord answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you, shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived the son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, hallelujah, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So we see that Mary didn't respond like Zechariah did. When the angel Gabriel went to Zechariah, he didn't believe. But as soon as God brought the word to Mary, Mary's response was different. She said, be it unto me according to whatever God said. Amen. And Mary arose, verse 39, in those days, and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Ju Judah, and entered into the house of Zechariah's, and saluted her cousin Elizabeth, amen. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, hallelujah, the baby, hallelujah, that was in Elizabeth's womb, when she heard Mary's voice, the baby leapt and leaped inside of her womb, amen. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, verse 42, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb. And look at what she said. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things that was told her from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's look a little bit at what Mary said, because a lot of people, they talk about, the Mary, they talk about the Virgin Mary. They talk about a lot of things, how she was, 
the mother of the Lord, but they never, they never go to this part in Scripture and talk about when, when Mary began to speak unto God, hallelujah, and what her response to God was, hallelujah, from what God had done in her body, amen. In verse 46, Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my soul hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lower state of a handmaid. Amen. So apparently in the city where she was from, she was a person that was regarded of a very low state. She was the last person that somebody would have thought that God would have bestowed that type of honor on. Amen. But she recognized how she was viewed to people. Amen. Hallelujah. So she said in 48, for he hath regarded the low state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Amen. So Mary let us know that the oath that God swore, amen, to Abraham, the oath that God swore to David, and the oath that he fulfilled to her, it didn't stop with her. That it wasn't going to stop with her. Hallelujah. She was letting us know that the same mercy that God had was going to flow unto us, to every generation. Verse 51, and he showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He has hoping his servant Israel, as he spake to our father, Hallelujah. To Abraham and to his seed forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So she was acknowledging right there. Hallelujah. In real time. Amen. That the oath. Hallelujah. That God had spoke to Abraham was being fulfilled within herself. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. I thank you that God is an oath. I thank you, God, that you are an oath. You don't have to make an oath. You are an oath, and I thank you, Lord God, that you remember. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. God used two barren women, two barren people, to kick off the earth, the oath that he made. Abraham and Sarah, his wife, were both stricken in age, and they was too old to have children. And, and, and Sarah was barren. She couldn't have children. So when God... Look at what God did. In order for him to kick off the promise that he, that he made, amen, he used two barren people, Abraham and Sarah. And then whenever, a thousand, thousands of years later, when he decided that he wanted to fulfill that earth oath, he took two more barren people. He took Zechariah and he took Elizabeth, who was also both stricken in age. Hallelujah. So he took Sarah and Abraham to have the son Isaac, Hallelujah, when they was too old to have children, to kick off the oath. And then he took Zechariah and Elizabeth, when they was too old to have children, to have a child that was going to prepare the way for him that was going to fulfill the oath. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. So my question to you tonight is, what does God promise you? Hallelujah. You know, right now, there's a lot of things going on. The country and the world, hallelujah, is in the midst of a pandemic that we thought would be over or getting better by now. Amen? And just when it seemed, we went through a whole year of it. And just when it seemed we was out of church, at one point they shut the church down. We couldn't even come to church. We couldn't even fellowship together. Some churches still have never resumed churches where the congregations are there. Amen? So many people... Hallelujah. I've heard so many people say that so many people have fallen away from God since this pandemic happened. Hallelujah. So many people, hallelujah, have been distanced from God. Hallelujah. So it seems, hallelujah, that the church would be a barren woman in this time. It seems that the church would be like Elizabeth, that the church would be like Sarah. Hallelujah. But let's remember, God used a barren woman, amen, to fulfill the oath that he made to Abraham. 
Hallelujah. God used a barren woman, amen, to fulfill the oath that he made to David, amen. That's somebody that's on a sick bed tonight. That's laying on a bed of affliction. It may be, it may be any type of day. It may be on a bed of affliction with COVID right now. They might be on a ventilator. Amen. They may have somebody struggling with cancer and all type of sickness and disease. They're probably right now saying, God, where are you? Where are you, God? Have you forgotten? Hallelujah. My labor of love. Lord, you promised me that you would do this. You promised me that you would do that, Lord. But where are you in my life, oh God? Hallelujah. Somebody that may have had a calling on their life. It may have been years ago that God might have told you that you had a calling on your life. God might have told you that you would preach the word. God might have told you that you was going to walk in a, sp a specific office, amen, and have a certain ministry. But it seemed like life shifted you in a different direction. And it may seem like, well, God, how can I minister and do what you told me to do if it seemed like I'm caught up doing this, amen? Hallelujah. But we read in the Bible that John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, when he was a child, he began to grow. And he began to wax strong, the Bible say, in the spirit. But look at what the Bible say. He was in the desert. The Bible say he was hid away in the desert until the time of his showing to Israel came. Hallelujah. Now, I looked up that word showing to Israel. That word showing is when a person has been elected to a certain office. And the time come when they bring them to the platform. They've been hidden away. But the time come when they bring them to the platform and say, now is your time to be exposed. Now is your time to be shown what I called you to do, amen. Hallelujah. I'm here to say to a lot of people tonight, amen. God has not forgotten you, amen. God is an oath. Hallelujah. He remembers. Whoever you are on your bed of affliction, God is an oath. He remembers, hallelujah, that purpose that you have upon your life. Remember, you feel like God has forsaken you. But God has not forsaken you. Because God is a new. Because it's impossible for God to lie. Hallelujah. So God is not a man, right, that he should lie. If he said it, won't he also do it? Man, if he spoke it, won't he also bring it to pass? Whatever that thing is that God spoke up on your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So it may seem like you're sitting on the sidelines. It may seem like the church is sitting as a barren woman. Amen. They, some people say, well, don't look like nobody gets saved no more. Hallelujah. Look like so many people crying about the injuries that's been done to the church. It just looks like there's so much reproach upon the church. Hallelujah. The woman, the bride of Christ, is so much reproach, and it seems like she's a barren woman. Hallelujah. But God is an oath. God is an oath. He remembers. Hallelujah. We're going to go to our last chapter here. Hallelujah. And we want to see the word, the oath, the word that God spoke to the woman, the word that God spoke to his bride, the word that he spoke to the church. Amen. That everybody in this time frame is saying is as a barren woman that can't bring forth, that can't produce. Amen. Let's go to Psalms chapter 54. Chapter 54. Tonight, hallelujah, I want to encourage all the pastors out there. Hallelujah. All of the shepherds that's over ministries right now. Hallelujah. That seem like it's just a struggle. With this pandemic, is a struggle with the people that's leaving. It's the struggle with getting the people to come. It's a struggle to, to try to keep the ministry going. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight, amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage the women out there. Hallelujah. There's women, even in our church, hallelujah, that's been waiting for years to bear children that are literally barren. Hallelujah. Or so the doctor said. Hallelujah. Like Elizabeth was. Barren like Hannah was. Barren like Sarah was, amen? Hallelujah. And, but a word was spoken to them, hallelujah, that, they were, that their womb would bring forth, amen? But it hasn't happened, and they've been waiting so long, and they're asking the question, God, do you remember me? God, do you remember the word that you spoke? 
unto me. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight, amen. Psalms 54. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I need to find this scripture. Hallelujah. If y'all would just bear with me just for a moment, amen. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, oh God. Glory be to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory. We're going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 54, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. I want to speak this to the church, amen. I want to speak this to anybody tonight that might be in a barren state. Hallelujah. Whether it be a young man that's out there on the streets that's struggling with addiction, amen, it seems like no matter what, I can't break out of this. I can't break out of this condition. It's like I got this monkey on my back, this weight on my back, and I, it's, no matter what I do, it seems like I just can't release from it. Hallelujah. You're in a barren state, amen, but I want to minister to you tonight, amen. Verse 50, chapter 54, verse 1. And this is what God said to those that are barren. Sing, O oh barren. He's telling the barren, he's telling you to sing. If you're in a barren state tonight, God is telling you to sing. Thou that did not bear, break forth in the singing. Hallelujah. In other words, God is telling you, don't sit, don't sit in the corner. Don't sit. Remember what Moses did when he got to the, to the river, to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea was in front of him, and Pharaoh's army was in back of him, and he turned to God, and he began to cry out to God and say, God, what are we going to do? And God told him, don't cry out to me. Get up. Hallelujah. Stretch your staff over the wall. Amen. Hallelujah. And see my, my wondrous work. Hallelujah. Be done. Amen. So God is telling you, if you're in a barren state tonight, for whatever it is that you've been believing God for, don't sit there and say, woe is me. But God is telling you, break forth in the sin and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate, hallelujah, than the children of the married wife. Saith the Lord, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not, hallelujah, lengthen the cords and strengthen the stakes. For you shall, God, said, God is telling you, to begin to make room for yourself. Hallelujah. God is saying begin to make some room. Hallelujah. Open up your living room. Amen. Open up your yard. Amen. Begin to open up your wallet. Put it on the table. Lay it down. Whatever it is, the situation that you're in, that you've been desolate in, God is saying begin to make some room. Hallelujah. Begin to prepare. Hallelujah. For you shall break forth on your right hand and on your left. And your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate the cities to be inhabited. Verse 4, fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Some of you that may be sitting in a situation where you feel ashamed, but that's how Elizabeth was. That's how Mary was. Both of them was in a situation where they was ashamed because everybody looked at them and said they couldn't have children. They looked at Mary like she was a, a reproach. Amen. Despise. Amen. But fear not, you shall not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For you shall forget the shame of your youth. Hallelujah. And you shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Hallelujah. God is saying, a time is coming. Hallelujah. A time is coming where the oaths and the things that I spoke to you and promised you are going to be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. And everything, hallelujah, that all of the shame, all of the brokenness, all of the hurt that you feel, you're not even going to remember it anymore when I begin to pour out my blessings upon your life. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Hallelujah. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Hallelujah. And a wife of youth, when thou was refused, saith God. 
Hallelujah. For a small moment, verse 7, have I forsaken thee. But with great mercies will I gather thee. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage y'all tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm hoping, hallelujah, that in some way that this word that God spoke to me because I, have, I was crying out to God. Amen. There had been a while that I just got so much caught up and so many, the busyness of life, amen, that I begin to neglect to go before God, amen, to go before God and spend that time with him. And I realized, hallelujah, that in a moment, I realized, see, man, I've been trying to live this life in my own strength. When God said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. Hallelujah. And I begin to make a determination in my mind. I say, Lord, I want you to draw me back into that secret place, amen? Draw me back to that place where I could just be with you, just be alone with you, with no interruptions, with no distractions, where I don't have anywhere else to go, I don't have anything else to do. But this time that I'm coming before you, hallelujah, I'm just dedicating this time to you, and I'm here to, until you're done with me. Amen? Hallelujah. And I begin to cry out. And I begin to cry before God and weep before God. I begin to tell God, Will you receive me back into your presence? I kept telling God, I said, God, don't, don't forget me. Don't forget me. I said, God, remember me. Remember me, oh God. Hallelujah. Receive me. Receive me back. Hallelujah. Like that song says, it's been a while. But hear my heart's cry again. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I begin to cry out the words to that song and say, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I got up, hallelujah, from before the Lord, amen, and begin to go into my word, this is where God led me. Hallelujah. This is the word that God led me. And God led me to the place where he showed me that the name Zachariah means God remembers. And the name Elizabeth means God is an oak. Hallelujah. So I say, okay, God, I understand what you're saying. I'm telling, I'm telling God, I'm crying out to God, telling him, don't forget me. Please remember me. And God is coming back and saying, I cannot forget you. I remember you. I am an oak. So everything that I spoke into your life, everything that I spoke into your life from your, when you was in your mother's womb, those things that I called you to do, that I said you would do, everything that I spoke to you through our prophets, Anna Bolden, everything that I spoke into your life, surely, God say, I hid you. I hid you in the desert until the time of your showing. But I am an oath. I remember, and I will bring those things to pass. And I received that word from God, and it encouraged me, and I felt and I believed that it was a word that God not only gave me for myself, but a word that God gave me for his people. So that whatever situation that you're in, that you will remember that God is an oath. Elizabeth, God is an oath. And that you will remember the name of Zachariah, hallelujah, that God remembers, amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I just lift up your people before you tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, I pray. Father, that anyone, Lord God, that may be out there, regardless of the situation that they're in, oh God. Hallelujah. Whether it be sickness, whether it be affliction, whether it be oppression, depression, oh God. Barrenness of the womb, oh God. Barrenness is in any situation, oh God. I lift up your people before you right now, Lord God. Lord, and I pray, oh God, and as, as we begin to return to you, Lord God, in prayer, as we begin to return, oh God, to you, Lord God, in our secret places, oh God, to begin, oh God, to call upon your name, oh God, and begin to humble ourselves, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would speak, oh God, that you would meet us, oh God, at the point of our need, oh God. Right now, Lord God, and that you would let, oh God, each and every person, oh God, at the sound of my voice know, Lord God, that you are an oath, oh God. Hallelujah. And that you remember, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. I pray that this word has been a blessing to somebody tonight, amen. Hallelujah. And that it would encourage somebody like it encouraged me, amen. Hallelujah. If y'all want to give, hallelujah, if this ministry is a blessing to you, hallelujah, you're going to put it up on the screen, hallelujah, y'all can be a blessing to this ministry. I promise you the soil 
It's fertile soil to get a great return on your harvest. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. Hallelujah. I pray, your, pray each and every one of your strength. Hallelujah. I speak blessings, increase, miracles. Amen. Upon your lives, oh God, that God would increase you more and more. Amen. And I pray that you would pray my strength in the Lord. Hallelujah.